dealing with infrared IR pollution with and without filters. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with infrared light pollution with and without filters. I'll leave a link to everything I discuss in the description below this video. Let's get started. First, what is IR pollution? This simple graphic represents the visible light that the human eye can see. However, there is light that we cannot see. On one end of the spectrum is ultraviolet light, UV, and at the other end of the spectrum is infrared light, IR. Unfortunately, even though we can't see IR light with our eyes, some cameras have a hard time dealing with IR light when we use ND filters on our lenses. In case you don't know, ND filters are like sunglasses for our lenses. You'll need them in bright sunlight to have control over shutter speed, ISO, and f-stop to get proper camera exposure. Here's a variable ND filter on my lens. I can dial it to just the right amount to achieve proper exposure. They are quite handy. Unfortunately, if you use a high amount of ND on your lens, you may see IR pollution in your footage and the black areas of your image especially. These areas usually turn reddish or brownish. Unfortunately, color correction and edit doesn't seem to do a good job of fixing this problem. So how do we handle IR pollution? First, let's create the problem. To do this, I'm using my Blackmagic Pocket 6K camera with a Sigma 18-35mm f1.8 art lens. I'll be shooting a table with a black cloth on top of it, with a color chart sitting next to a white card. On the front of my lens, I'm using a Genestech Variable ND filter. It's dialed to its strongest amount of ND. My lens is set to f1.8, my ISO is set at 100, and my shutter speed is at 1 48th of a second, because I am shooting 24 frames per second. Remember, for normal motion blur, Always set your shutter speed to twice the frames per second that you are recording. You'll notice the disgusting IR pollution right away. Look at all the red and the black areas of the shot. If I simply put a Hoya UV IR cut filter in front of the lens, you'll notice how the red disappears. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect solution. You'll notice a little green in the corner of the image. You'll also notice that the Genestech Variable ND filter has created an ugly X pattern over our image, mainly because I'm using it at full strength. It does work much better at lower settings. Because of that reason, let's get rid of this ND filter and try a different one. This time I'll use a BMW XS Pro Digital ND Vario MRC Nano Filter. Let's see what that looks like without the IR cut filter in front of it. It looks much better, but I still notice a slight discoloration in the black areas of the shot. Let's add a step of ring so that we can screw the IR filter onto the front of the B&W ND filter. Carefully research what size step up ring and IR cut filter you will need to stack your filters together. In my case, the Sigma lens can take a 72mm ND filter, so that's the one I purchased. The B&W ND filter has 77mm front filter threads. To put my Hoya 82mm UV IR cut filter in front of it, I'm using a 77 to 82mm step up ring. Now everything fits together and won't cause any vignetting. The combination of the B&W ND filter with the Hoya IR cut filter works well. No X in the middle of the image, and the colors look good in my opinion. So what if you don't have ND or IR cut filters? Well the good news is, even if your camera is sensitive to IR pollution, if you don't use strong ND filters, you won't have any IR pollution issues. But there are some drawbacks. Let me show you. Let's handle proper exposure and harsh sunlight without any filters by using shutter speed alone. To get proper exposure in this harsh sunlight without filters, I had to bring my shutter speed from 1 48th to 1 2,000th of a second. You'll notice that our image looks pretty good. Unfortunately, with such a high shutter speed, our motion blur does not look natural. 
watch the movement of my hand. Another way we can deal with getting proper exposure on a bright sunny day without a filter is to use a high numbered f-stop. For this to work in our shot, we had to close our lens down from f1.8 to f16. This solves our motion blur problem, but you'll notice that we no longer have shallow depth of field. Our background is no longer blurry with the Sigma at f16. I sure do miss setting it to f1.8. We wouldn't have to close down our lens so much if we increased our shutter speed a little bit. So that's another approach if you want to mix increasing shutter speed with f-stop settings. The next solution to expose properly without filters is to move our subject into shadow. As you can see, this works pretty well, but it may not always be possible and sometimes shadowy areas are still too bright. It's an unreliable solution. So, my favorite solution for dealing with IR pollution is using a good variable ND filter, like the one I showed you from BMW, with a good IR cut filter, like the one from Hoya. Another solution is just to buy a camera that handles IR pollution better. The choice is yours. I hope this video helped educate you on dealing with IR pollution. And in the comments section, let me know if you have a combination of ND and IR cut filters that you like to use. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.